York City and a love triangle. What more could you need? Hi everyone, what's up? It's Andrea, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited because I'm gonna be filming a book haul for the first time in a really long time. However, this is not just your average book haul. It's a mystery book haul because I have no idea what is in this bag and I'm kind of scared. I have been waiting for two weeks to open this package of books because I have not been able to film this video until now, until today, and I wanted to be authentic. Look, it's stapled shut. I have not taken a peek. So I went downtown to this lovely little bookshop called Sellers and Newell, secondhand bookstore. And I went there because my friend Feven was like, hey girl, there are these $10 bags of books. You should come and get one. And so I did. All right, so we're gonna open it. Okay. I feel like they're gonna be a bunch of more random books. The first one, Handbook of Psychic Discoveries by Sheila Ostrander and Lynn Schroeder. This handbook provides you with the latest methods for conducting hundreds of intriguing psychic experiments. Raw photography, plant perception, telepathy, psychokinesis, pyramid energy, teleprompting with a teleflasher. Okay, let's, let's, let's see the next book. John O'Casey, The Man and His Work by David Krause. The first comprehensive study of the great Irish playwright and events that influenced him. Next one is Steinbeck Travels with Charlie. <laughs> Who is this by? By John Steinbeck. Cool, cool, cool. Love me some good, these are all old books probably by the way, because they're for $10, you know? Great Racing Stories, selected and introduced by Dick Francis and John Welcome. Cool. See, the reason why I love stuff like this is because these are books I would never pick up by myself, but I have a feeling that one of these is probably gonna be really great. I might as well give it a read. You know, might as well. All right, next, those weren't too promising. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> okay, this next one is Freud, His Life and His Mind, an exciting and controversial, bi controversial biography, including the theory of psychoanalysis by Helen Walker Pooner, with a new forward by Eric Fong. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. This is, a this is like a psychology bag, it seems. I feel like, Next time I go, I'm gonna ask him, which bag should I take if I really like fiction? Hopefully he'll point me in the right direction because I just picked up a random bag and I feel like when I picked up that bag, he was kind of like, are you sure, are you sure that's one that you want? I'm gonna wish I had the genres on it. I think that would be really cool. Oh, cool. Okay, I love history. I love ancient Egypt. But I would never have picked this up because I don't see a purpose in reading about it, but now I have a reason to because I own it. So, okay. This is just a copy of Mad Libs, um, which is kind of cool. So it's a comic book, it's a graphic novel. Cool, cool, cool. This is printed in 1977. I, wow. Love me some good vintage books. This is called Rex Stout, Red Threads. Okay, it's called Red Threads by Rex Stout. Graham Greene, Dr. Fisher of Geneva or the Bomb Party. The covers are beautiful. When the notorious toothpaste millionaire decides to hold his own deadly version of the Book of Revelations, Greene opens up a powerful vision of the limitless greed of the rich. Manages to say more about love, hate, happiness, grief, immortality, greed, and the disgustingly rich than most contemporary English novels, three times the length. When was this? 1980. 1980. Last book from this little bag, let's see. The Five Bells and Blade Bone by Martha Grimes. 
This is a murder mystery. Antiques dealer Marshall Trueblood had finally haggled the owner of Water Meadows, a lush country estate near the little village of Long Piddleton, into parting with a beautiful rosewood desk. He hadn't bargained on the corpse stuffed inside. The body belonged to the notorious philanderer Simon Lean, Richard Drury of Scotland Yard and his aristocratic sidekick Melrose Plant had no end of suspects, but Jury's best clue led to a London pub, the Five Bells and Bladebone. There he would learn about his Lean's about Lean's liaison with a shady lady named Sadie, who might help solve the case if she wasn't murdered first. Oh damn. I don't know how I feel about that bag of books. I feel like I want to go and get a new one and try again because those weren't what I was expecting. Now moving on to the books I actually chose to purchase. The first one is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I have been meaning to buy a book, to own a book, to read a book by James Baldwin for the longest time. This is a favorite author of a friend of mine and they were constantly posting about this book and how much they loved this book and I was like I have to, I just have to obtain it so that I can read it because from all the little snippets that they were posting on their Instagram story of like little underlying passages, I was like, I know I will probably love this. Set in the 1950s Paris of American expatriates, liaisons and violence, a young man finds himself caught between desire and conventional morality. What really drew me to this specific book was that it was set in Paris and, you know, I'm a sucker for Paris. That's just... Psh. I'm not really sure when I'm gonna read this, but it definitely has been bumped up on my TBR. Next book that I purchased, I got last month because I wanted to get a Valentine's Day gift for my friend and me, and it's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Fong. Really briefly, this book is a letter from a son to mother. He's reflecting on their life and his childhood growing up. I haven't finished this yet, but when I do, I really wanna make an entire video on it because I've never read such a such beautiful prose. I'm so happy that I purchased this. It was quite expensive, but I feel like it was definitely worth the investment in myself as a writer who loves to read beautiful writing. The next book I'm going to haul is Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler, and it's actually a funny story why I have this book. I saw an image of Rosie Huntington Whiteley reading it, and within the same week, I added it to my Goodreads, I saw this sort of Instagram picture of Rosie Huntington Whiteley reading it, and then I had seen it on thrift books for really cheap. Thrift books, it's like an online thrift bookstore. Not sponsored. <laughs> um, and so I just picked it up, I just put it in my car. Basically, from what I know about this book, it follows this girl named Tess, she's 22, she's my age, and she moved to New York City and starts working at this restaurant, and it's all about her learning about life. It's a little bit of a coming of age tale. Food, New York City, and a love triangle. What more could you need? Next book I thrifted pretty recently, and that is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. And this book has been on my Goodreads TBR for a while, and I saw it at the thrift store, so I picked it up. From what I know about this book, it's about a girl named Claudia, and her friend Monday goes missing one day, and it seems that people around her don't seem to care much about it or nobody really notices and it's all about her trying to figure out what is going on and why her friend went missing. It deals a lot with issues of race, class, gender, and abuse, gentrification, marginalization. From the reviews and from all of the quotes from different authors who have read this, I am so excited to pick this up. The next book is 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis and it's a can by a Canadian author. I was so excited when I found this when I was thrifting because I've heard a lot of really great things about this book. It's won a few prizes. This book is about a bet between the gods Hermes and Apollo and a bet that they make. They grant human consciousness to this group of dogs on earth to just see what happens as like a social experiment I guess. They're like I wonder what would happen if you know animals were could have the same level of intelligence and consciousness as humans. From what I've been told, it's a really beautiful and brilliant story about what it means to be human and human human's existence, which is always great. I love an existential crisis. When I was looking up reviews for this book, someone said that it had a very poetic writing style, which is it's always something I really love, so really excited. Yeah. The next book that I found was The Luminaries 
by Eleanor Catton and this has been on my TBR for a really long time now and I've just been waiting to find it at the right thrift store because <laughs> uh, it's she, elle est très grand. It is 1866 and Walter Moody has come to make his fortune upon the New Zealand God Fields. On the night of his arrival, he stumbles across a tense gathering of 12 local men who have met in secret to discuss a series of unsolved crimes. The town's wealthiest man has vanished, a prostitute, has tried to end her life, and an enormous fortune has been discovered in the home of a luckless drunk. Moody is soon drawn into the mystery, a network of fates and fortunes that, as, that is as exquisitely patterned as the night sky. Set during the heady days of New Zealand's gold rush and brilliantly structured around an astrological frame, Eleanor Catton's internationally celebrated novel is a magnificent tale of love, lust, murder, and greed. Love that. That is the last book. So excited. As you can see, a lot of my books I thrift or I try to get secondhand unless I really can't find it. There are a couple of really great places I would recommend. Um, things like Goodwill or Value Village typically have used books. Thriftbooks.com, as I mentioned. There are a couple of other ones in the US that I'm not really sure about. There are a ton of local used bookstores in Toronto. I'm not sure if there are ones near you. And Facebook Marketplace, surprisingly, and Kijiji. They have a lot of people who are giving away books for free or for a really, really low price. So if you're able to just pick up or pay for shipping, um, those are some great options. If you work for a publishing house, please send me books. I really, really want to read some more YA books and talk about them. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos and follow me on Instagram for all the latest updates. Have a wonderful